Hey guys, welcome to another um, episode of weekly comic deliveries. Uh, this week, um, it seems that I'm moving more into toys as well as co um, comics uh, deliveries as well, because I think um, it's, I mean, if you look behind me, right, I just have a passion for toys. I mean, it's just something I love. And so, you know, we see all this stuff, you realize why I sort of bounce between comics and and um and toys so today let's start with something negative get that get that silly stuff out of the way so this is a parcel that like according to new zealand postage um uh, let me find a rule i should have got this first but i think it's a bit about it so according to new zealand uh postal delivery you can basically you're allowed to, uh, you know, send something as an envelope as long as it's under two millimeter, uh, uh, 20 millimeter, which is two centimeters. So they have this little thing, little, uh, you know, little card that they go through and they go, yep, that's an, that's an envelope. That's a letter. That's fine. So last week, this is from last week's deliveries. I got delivered this. So as you can see, it's not even one freaking centimeter, right? Uh, where are we? If you can see that. Yeah. It just comes, just comes just around one centimeter. So, but the, here's the thing. So the guy, you know, the person I, who's, who I bought this item of, which is a comic book, and it cost me a dollar, right? He had a dollar reserve. Nobody else bid on it. So I ended up winning it for a dollar. Now, obviously, he might not have actually ever sold comics and this is the first time he thought he'll it's this comic it'll make a lot of money for me and obviously i guess it didn't and so i don't know what you know he decides to sell it for eight dollars i mean send it to me for eight dollars forty right which is sad because it just means that um what i could have paid three dollars fifty for i've lost out on a five dollar uh, four dollars ninety cents, right? That's like half a comic book value. I just look at it like that, and I could have spent that five dollars on another comic or something. So that's kind of like bummed me out. As soon as I saw that, I was like, you know, it's one of those things. It's like I said, um, I my only ask usually is any of these when it comes to comics is please send it between uh, cardboard so that the postie doesn't bend it. And that's not an indictment on the postie. There's so many people did handle. You know the comment before it gets to me so okay so he did that right okay as you can see uh it's very thin here did that that's perfect pretty good comic uh now that's all he sent it so if you're a comic uh collector uh or a seller you know that you never sell a, you know you shouldn't be sending comics without and look uh, previously, you know, I've, I've had, I thought I was going to get really bad. Uh, the way it arrived was going to be really bad, so I was I was a bit stressed and bummed because, like, I don't when I buy a comic book, I don't usually, uh, you know, I do it. It's a very important thing for me. Otherwise, I don't even spend an effort on it. I research it, what it is, you know, maybe in a 20, 20 years when I go to sell it, will it have any value to me or to have a, you know, to my, to whoever owns, ends up getting my collection, which is like, uh, you know, I don't have insurance yet. So whoever, you know, is going to benefit is going to be uh, very happy, let's just say that. And if they ever decide, uh, I'll probably put a clause in my will that they don't sell it, that they there's only a certain amount of things they can sell, the other ones they can hold. So... This is a 20, 30 cent, um, I hope, I think it might be a news on Reaper. No, the planet of Star Trek. All I saw was like Star Trek comic. I am bidding on it. As you can see, it's got photos, right? Of the, look at that, right there. Eura, right? And Spock, as well as Gene Roddenberry's wife, Majel, Majel Roddenberry, um, who is the voice of the computer on next generation i think um and also i think might have been on not enterprise the next one after that 
So this is a South Pacific Publications, Hong Kong, uh, co-published by South Pacific Publications Limited, Hong Kong, Philippines, and Rosnick Publications, Australia. Printed in the Philippines, recommended and maximum price only. Recommended and maximum price only. So that means they were only allowed to sell this for 30 cents. So this is a reprint. Um, because, you know, it's co-published. Um, so this is copyright 1967 uh, by Desilu Productions Incorporated. Desilu? Yeah, Desilu. Desi is another name for um, it, like um, an Indian. Expat Desi? Desi? Yeah. So, me. <laughs> it's was like Desilu. I was like, yeah. Okay, so all rights reserved throughout the world, published by arrangement with Western Pu Publishing Company Incorporated, Resident Wisconsin, USA. So this Planet of No Return, look at that. Look at the quality of artwork of this 1967, right, comic book. Look at that. Spark. Amazing black and white of Spark. You know, I am um, in the back cover. It says 26 April. It's got a stamp in it. 26 April 1979. All right, that's like six years after I was born. It's such a um, such a cool thing. It's got like advertising for Victoria, right? Um, uh, stamp collection. Uh, when I was a kid, I was into a bit of stamp collecting, but not so much because like. Um, you know, you got to have money for that sort of thing. But I did collect some when it was sent from PG and somebody, you know, I kind of had a pen, pen pal at some point. I can't remember. Especially remember. So there's part one and there's part two, Planet of No Return. This is gorgeous. Like, seriously, I love it. It's like, uh, it's tw 28004. It's got this um, number up at the top there. So that's pretty cool. Um, okay, so I'm happy with the fact that I actually ended up paying five dollars a four dollars ninety cents more for this you know for this comic um because it's in good condition um and it's so old even though it's like printed in uh, 19 gosh 1967 it says here you know um yeah it's like such a you know sometimes it's just just i just love comics so much that sometimes it's seeing something so old and seeing the quality of the illustrations, you know, especially the inking, it's just so cool. But like, especially the pencils and stuff, because I'm, I'm really about the art. Even though I, I mean, I'm a, as a writer, I, um, when when someone, when an artist that's worked on my book, on my story and my creation, um, I really appreciate it because I, I look at that and I go. Man, I am. I'm gonna do all my all the best I can not to embellish it. Now, there's sometimes I have to go. Okay, this is just in the wrong place. Um, just so it works properly. What I'm trying to do is, because I actually letter my own books. So if there's six issues, I'm lettering six six issues, as well as writing it, as well as editing it. But of course, I'm gonna have an editor soon. But the other thing is, I've been I've had free reign. On what I can write and how I write and what I present for ages, you know, from my first six issues of um, a circle, right? I was I was able to just put it out there as how I wanted it. Now because we're you know more of a company base, getting more artists involved, I want to make sure that each issue is impactful right away. And I even like you know mentioned in my last video that I actually stopped. Uh, my um, you know I said to my artist, um, okay. Uh, let's just not do that one for the time. Just, just hold off, tie ho, tie ho, as we say it here. Um, you know, hold off, um, and just uh, we'll, you know, we'll. Uh, when I'm in the right mind, we'll come to it. And that's what I've been doing today. I've been like really like uh, cleaning up my room, cleaning up my wardrobe. It was full of stuff, clothing, hats everywhere, and it was just. I'll be doing a video about my caps later on. The ones I actually paint. 
um, to make it my own and the ones that I collect and the ones that are sci-fi and um, comic book based, right? So that we, so, you know, tomorrow or some other time when I come get around to that because I am still busy. And the reason I did that is because I'm trying to clean up my whole apartment so I can actually be in the right frame of mind to write a really uh, hard hitting, um, you know, a comic book that I'm actually the first issue that I'm really working on, which is, <sighs> which isn't the greatest, you know, not the greatest story. What I mean, which isn't like the easiest story to write because of um, because of the subject matter. All right, so let's interlude that with with the next comic book with this. So I've um I picked up uh this item a couple of weeks ago, which is a gyro, right? So it's a uh, Action Man, Action Man Gyro AAG uh, 72. I've got all the pieces, but sadly, um, there is no screw for the top part because it was quite small. And so the people who packed it uh, actually didn't realize that this, this, I think it's a pillowcase packing thing or whatever they do, it's actually got some little holes in it, as you can see there. You can see that, yep. There you go. So there's little holes on both sides of this bag. So the little screw that wasn't attached, like this one here, right, is missing. So the cool thing about this is it's like you put in a battery and it lights up. The other thing is it has all these this little shooty things that you know you can um, you saw the Batman car do that the other day. You can see, I mean, with um, with Michael um, Mead when we were talking about Batman the other day and stuff, and him writing and editing comics for us with Plunge, and he's part of Plunge now. We just got to get the contracts right, and um, he knows what it. You know, I sent him the rough draft. Said this is what the contract details. We just got three different, you know, ways things that are sorted out and say here you go. But he's he's cool. He's like me. He's like let's get the work going so we don't get left behind. You know, we gotta, you know, do it. So anyway, so this are, I mean, I got this for about ten bucks, right? And so it's got wheels that spin. It's like a, you know, it's a gyro. You know, it moves and everything, and it's got the, you know, it's got a little thing, um, um helicopter spinner thing, whatever propeller the back. It's got the handholds for the, you know, for the um action man. The other thing is, uh, so I don't know what happened, uh, but this didn't come with the action man itself, which is okay. I can go out and buy one separately for about eight dollars or something or whatever it is, if I can find one that is. And but it comes with the clothing of the action man, which is kind of cool. It comes with the helmet, so I'm not sure if it's supposed to be the, you know, if there's supposed to be another piece to this, maybe the back, but. I don't see it, so I guess it's just, yeah, you know, it's just like that, right? It's pretty cool. I think it's pretty cool. It's got this little, you know, infrared thing. I guess it's a special thing. And the, the reason I think that's really cool is because Red Dot, uh, my character, has uh, oh, I should have had a thing, but I didn't think I was going to speak about it. But Red Dot, oh, it might be. Let's see if he's here. Oh yeah, he's here. Right, so Red Dot. Right, Red Dot, our character that um, Shane and I co-created. Uh, I came up with the I came up with the idea and the story, and Shane did the artwork and, and, and conceptualized the character. I came up with you know with the design of the logo. He came up with the awesome freaking you know the uniform, how it looked. But you know this thing, right? I just just realized this it took me ages to create the skull with the red dot in it. Anyway. So you know he, the reason I say that is because he's got he he's, he he rides a motorbike, right? That's his thing, a motorbike, right? So um, so the cool thing is like I mean you mentioned this is that like you know now I've got to design a helmet for him and so this is how it looks because I like to be on top of I'm very um, full on uh, hands on I should say excuse me. Hands on when it comes to creating my characters or the comic books I write. So the thing is that I want my uh, characters to look a specific way. 
but I also give the artist license to how to re rework that jig it to make it work because seriously I don't know uh, anatomy that well I'm a designer not a illustrator I've I studied art I mean anatomy when I was you know back in friggin 94 95 95 probably 95 and um excuse me and um you know when you look at that uh you know way back i wasn't really paying attention because i had I was three months into the course i had a hand an accident and i wasn't so much any more keen to draw shit and so i was uh, basically just uh you know doing clay work doing glass blowing doing anything that didn't mean i had to use my freaking hand because i was always in pain it's still sometimes in pain it causes a lot of pain sometimes um i don't notice it that much uh, but i do wear armband from every uh, a compression elastic compressor uh, when it starts aching and i have problems with the mouse you know and of course <laughs> being on the internet like i am on my back in bed all day long trying to like you know do what i do creatively writing and stuff um it gets wear and tear and it really um gets stiffens up right and it, it, it has this really you know you can see it like you know it sticks out as you can see it sticks out right so it really hurts um after a while so um you know you gotta get the meds going and stuff but yeah so anyway so i didn't do that much stuff with anatomy and stuff uh, because like three months into it you're like you got to do a whole year of study the body and stuff and so what i did was i just went and stayed played around with clay and went sort of all henry wood or henry miller or somebody i can't remember his name but he does all these like um huge forms of um sculptures out of did i should say out of brass and stuff very famous guy uh anyway so so I let my artists, you know, and I have a lot of, um, you know, I work with five different artists and they have their own styles, which I love, you know, I can go from like doing a cartoon, um, a cartoon strip, a comic strip with teddy bears all the way over to superheroes and then all the way again to uh, demons and angels and horror comics. And it's just so cool. And then again, to a uh, slice of life story, you know, based in the Pacific Islands. So I have different, like I say, I have different artists working on different things, and it's just such a cool, it's it's a privilege to have that sort of at my hands because of our affiliation with, uh, you know, our uh, our connection, uh, and with Rising Sun Comics America, right? Uh, Rising Sun Rising Sun Publishing, and so that's pretty, uh, you know, allows us to um, be ex have access to really cool artists and stuff, and. Where I don't have to really deal with contracts and stuff, it's all dealt with, with outside of me. All I am doing is saying, Hey, can I, I'm talking with my artist and going, Please, you know, do this and do that. That's what we need. And so it's really cool fun. And but like I said, you know, I'm, I'm hands on. And the reason I say I'm hands on, I got I want to create the helmet now. Uh, I know the cool thing is about Red Dot is that uh, Shane Evans, Sevens, who's the artist on it, and you know, the co creator of it he's come he's gonna he's using um uh, i can't remember john Britton, the, the new zealand um motorbike designer who designed the Britton bike and it's just such a great to see that and it's just you know it just really cements this character in new zealand so much more uh of course he's a sas officer all right so yeah the reason i mentioned all that is because of the helmet so i had to come up with the helmet design like I did with like the same thing with like when I did um Incredigal, right? I um this character. Should move on from this because you know, you know, I designed um you know the logo, I designed the uh, um the mask, you know, the whole wanted thing. And we changed it, like I've changed it so many times over the years since we got it. Done in two thousand uh, ten, I think I had somebody working on it in two thousand seven. But now, you know, I redesigned it um the costume last week because I was like I just wanted to stand out so much more. I know people know her as that, but I just want the um, costume to be so much more because. And I talked to my cosplayer friend, who actually cosplays as Incredible for Plunge Com uh, Plunge Com Pop Culture Convention here in front of Ray. Uh, she did the first year. She missed out on this. She did the second year. And I think she missed out last year. 
and she's great. And so Lynette basically, you know, she's a cosplayer. She designs her own costumes and stuff, and she's great at it. So I was, we had a meeting. We had like had a cup of um, coffee in uh, downtown the other week and said, hey, let's have a go with this. What, what do you think? What do you think? And we sat there and we cut up pieces of material, uh, foam, and said, okay, we can put it like this, do the strip here. And, all this. and that's a cool thing because, you know, I'm a fashion, I, I have done fashion as well. I mean, I've designed uh, clothing, you know, and stuff. And so that's not all my backup, my background stuff. So I have so many backgrounds and this is all coming into full because of this really cool uh, concept, uh, you know, uh, thing that we call Plunge Enterprise. Okay, so let's move on. But yeah, so, oh yeah, that's what I'm, so this thing came with all these, uh, like it came with this, like the, um, you know, what is this, like the, um, gosh, waistcoat, uh, armor, uh, pack, whatever, um, came out with the weapon, came with the boots, right, so obviously, um, you know, they got this, this was like a second thing, so you could be in normal clothes, and they did this, so they separated the character, the figure, right, for this, right, um, gyro, uh, actually meant gyro from the gyro, um, you know, and just figure from the job. So the other cool thing I was just going to try and mention before I forgot that there's a trigger here, a little trigger, and then you all there's a light, right? So like you put a battery in at the bottom. It says it takes one. I think it might be taking two mini ones, and um, and so you know, it kind of came with um gyrocopter instruction here, right? Uh, shows you what's all set up and tells you how to also. You know where to put the stickers but of course this is second hand so the stickers have come off and some of them is like as you can see has been put on and some of of course ah uh, have come off the page and so i'm gonna have to try to um if i want to you know i'd like to like actually put this on so i might actually get some i don't know some sort of glue that will allow the plastic to stick on that uh, sorry, the paper just to go on that without coming off or damaging the actual thing. All right, let's move on. Okay, so the last thing for today. I don't want to lose any of these pieces. Oh yeah, the other thing, it comes with three of these, right? And the other thing that, like, uh, of course, you know, with the um, blades, is that I don't know. I think something was supposed to go here, or why isn't it here? Is it something supposed to like thing in? I don't know. Uh, because it doesn't say anything about that. That's a weird thing. It's like it's supposed to look like that. So like, as you can see. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. No, no, no. I, I, no I'm right. Yeah, it is missing. So, yeah. So as you can see, it's the stickers are there. So that means it's the final way. You can stick it, right? Stick it on and you're done. So maybe yeah so it's good maybe it doesn't have anything there boots made for walking oh one of the things like if i'm carrying on with that red dot i actually bought a action man to do a red dot costume on uh because i want to oh I, I i look for that all the time i'm, I'm like a little you know uh gopher not a gopher we're like a little rat you know, running around, scurrying around, looking for stuff that I can later on put together. Oh, no, 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 beaver, beaver. I'm a little beaver when it comes to these sort of things where I'm, you know, I want to build my wall, <laughs> you know, so I got to, to build my wall, I got to come up with all these little things that I can uh, uh, think about in the future, you know, like I bought that action toy about two years ago, action man toy, two years ago, now I've got a freaking gyrocopter, you know, and it's like this, I'm always thinking years ahead of what, you know, what my plans will be, so yeah, so I think that's pretty cool, I think, um, I mean, that's my way of doing things, um, okay, so this is from LK, uh, and this is a, quite a big pack, um, and this is of the NZ, um, New Zealand Comics and Collectibles page. And here we go. So, yeah. Oh, and here's the thing, right? So, 
this is a career sign post i think it might have, like i think it's ten dollars or something but look at us like the small the sizes like right? so you can see it's actually this small compared to the other one right so you the guy could have like like it's like about three inches sorry uh yeah it's about three inches longer but this is the exact size that other one should have been like for um, for a comic right for sending by comics cardboard goes hmm. anyway that was fun so so you can see this right so this is the size that it should have come in save me a bit um, you know save me at least ten dollars but instead it came in a big size like this for no reason at all but i guess just lack of understanding on the part of the person sending or so on anyway so i find myself i've got some sort of like an indian dialect going on all of a sudden it's i can notice it when i'm speaking i don't know where it's coming from but i think it might have been because i have a tendency to pick up i can hear it i can hear this little i have a tendency to pick up accents because of years of watching tv and being and living in new zealand for so long and um oh wow okay okay so um i i haven't checked the exact name of the person who sold it because i love the surprises i really do like you know i like to see what it is when i see it all right so i mean when i open it so i all i know is it's from lk i think it was lk uh yep those might be on the other ones but this is lk so lk has sent me this and um and he's right i know he's a comic collector and stuff and a seller so cardboard please and i always ask cardboard please because like i said it can get bent it can get damaged the face of it can be damaged which is the worst thing uh it can get chipped i'm not like if it's an older comic it can get you know uh, a chip can come off it or if it's a um, you know or if it's a brand new comic and you bought it it look like brand new and next thing you know it's bent on and it's, it's the creases on the thing and so this one wow i think i thought this is a really cool pack um and and of course, LK is a comic collector, a comic reseller, and he's from NZCNC. So it's a trusted seller uh, because um, NZCNC is really, um, uh, really good. Um, the admins are really good, and the and the people on it are really good at sort of sorting out and <laughs> sorting me out this week, I should say. I'm I'm I'm, I'm blocked for a month because I did some silly stuff on my sale, sales or whatever it was but whatever it was i accepted i was a bit miffed at the start but i'm like as you do because i'm like any human like straight away i'll get aggro not aggro i was like deny it don't i don't know you know that five stages and then eh, i accept it <laughs> it's like three posts later i accept it okay i'm good i'm good okay so this is pretty cool this is like a whole bunch of um DC Comics, and um, I don't even remember buying these. This is the crazy thing about this. So let's have a look. This is Brian Augustine, 1992, Black Condor. First thrill pack issue, beginning an all new legend. Look at that. And like I said, it's from a comic um, seller and a comic lover and a collector a passionate person and why do i know that because of the way it's packed it's packed in a plastic bag and this is one of the old ones these bags like you can say this is this must have been like this is when they first came out like the first people of the comic book event strand of the sleeve like i remember doing that back in 89 man like i was like the moment i had my own money i was like and I was living in Auckland and there was comic books. I could go to secondhand shops. Boom. That was a comic book right up the road from me. Uh, at Sil um, what is now called Sylvia Park. But it was actually Mount Wellington um, Shopping Centre. 
and um, you know there was a bookshop there there's a uh, uh, VHS store there I mean video hire place um, video movie hire place I should say and they were really good I would order in what I wanted and they would bring it especially 2008 right but my the rest of my other comics came from um, from Mark One. I think it was Mark One. Yeah, Mark One, Queen Street, down bottom. Okay, so this is 1992. Um, this is probably the year after. I, no, no, I was still buying comics at this point. Yes, because I remember it was like a couple of years later that I was like a stop taught together, uh, and it had to do. Yeah, I think I was just dispassionate about everything because of a breakup I went through, and I just. Rather than escaping into my my comics again, which I usually did when I had popped issues, I went up not wish it was my, you know, I was getting depressed and um, worried too much. I got in my head too much. I turned to comic books to escape. At this point, I just didn't, and um, and that was sad because I I think it would have helped me, but you know, that's that. And so now we're going to move on to couple comics here this is the man of steel 1993 funeral for a friend uh, i can't remember if i've read this one i think this is you know as you can see it's john tells you on the cover i'm not sure if it's a variant cover this is issue number 21 the man of steel superman and it's 1993 why did i say nine so you can see that it's like it says nine and then it says 21. Mine's 93, then it says 1993, nine twice. So I'm not sure if this is a UK print, but I doubt it because it, it says Canada and UK and US. But you know, once again, it's a beautiful, beautiful um, cover. It's like such a simple cover. But it's kind of like giving away too much uh, about what's inside. Um, I like a mystery to my cover. Like I've been designing covers this week. I'm doing a trip kit. Um, not trip kit, a six issue variant. Not a variant, sorry. Six issue cover that all comes up together, which my artist is going to draw based on my concept. And that's, that's for Templeton Rise and Fall. Okay. So moving along, uh, we've got, that was, let's go, um, this is Night's End, part one, right? And there's a couple in here, and I can tell this is from an older, like, it's, it's you know, it's from an old plastic, right? And that's why I can tell, because the new plastic has this really, and of course, over time, it'll probably not have that Christmas, Christmas to it, as you can see here. Right, over time, it all gets soft, but it depends on the plastic, uh, you know, material they use, or type of plastic they use. Uh, but that's the like thing. So there is, um, it came together, uh, it was sorted together. Uh, but look at this. Isn't that cool? I bought this because of, I think it's Chuck Dixon. That's why I bought it. Yeah, Chuck Dixon. Please check out Chuck Dixon, Dixon's site on, um, I think, is it? Ask Chuck Dixon on YouTube. He's he's really really cool person to learn about um, characters that he's worked on, especially Robin. And I'm, I think he did like about a hundred issues of it. Man, that's like when you do like a hundred issue run of a character. That's that's amazing. These days they're like twelve issues, six issues, and it's done. I'm like like I'm said you know like I'm working on um. Um, I'm working on Templeton so the first um, book is Templeton Torn which is a three issue kind of like a three issue by 52 page story which I'm putting another eight pages into uh, from an earlier sort of um, artwork that we did which is a complete story on its own which has been free online to uh, download from Rises and Comics it's called Behemoth, Templeton Behemoth and we did it as like a special uh, you know, freebie um, show that was coming. I think it's been out there for 2019. Um, I let it, I paid for the artist at that time to actually do it, so I own all of it, which is really cool. And it's you know, seeing my characters do that, so 
you know, I, I, I admire Chuck Dixon because of his um, long, long career as, an, um, as a writer, and he's also doing his own things right now. You know, still writing, but he's doing it on his own, um, you know, independently. And this is such a pristine cover. I mean, seriously, you got three in the back there, three females there, gladiators, uh, not gladiators, but like, a, I, I don't know who they are really, to be honest. And I'm not gonna make a judgment on who they are, but like, it feels like Greece, Iliad, Iliads and Oddities. That's what it's called. There you go. This one's like, um, this is from 96, 96 of June. This is when I stopped reading comics. Uh, and plus, I wasn't reading DC. I, I was a loyalist, as I mentioned when we were um, on the, you know, on the conversation I had with, um, or the interview conversation, you know, just a podcast I had, I should say with um michael mead please check it out it's um you know it's on um it's on on here on on, on um, youtube right on my page here on my channel here sorry i should say so the other one here is i like i like to remove plastic uh, cell tape now because my friend rico said he doesn't like them because sometimes then he's right i have run into this problem where when you're trying to pull it out and it's got cell tape there it grabs onto the freaking cover and uh you know if you're not paying attention rip goes to cover but i'm always paying attention because i really really care about my comics and i've always cared about my comics I've, like i said i straight away i put it into the sleeve and i bought on the backing board we'd call it back and button um what was it a back and bag and button bag and button I think mostly these new guys don't, I mean, young, new, newbie comic collectors don't know that, or maybe they've forgotten, but like, old hat like me, you know, uh, what is it like, friggin', uh, oh, somebody sent me a message, um, you know, almost, I want to say 40, almost 40 years as a, as a comic book reader, and actually as a buyer is when I started really looking after my comics. So this is um, Batman Night's End Part 1. Now that's cool. That's like the first of that run. Uh, I think we were talking about last, and it's a thick book too. So we were talking about, um, you know, Batman the other day. So uh, I could have, you know, if, if, I, <laughs> if I had realized I'd gotten this in that pack, I would have opened it and shown it. So this is Night's End part one right spirit of the bat so let's see how many pages is this uh is there any special things this is quite like compared to uh at the same of two years later with bat um with you know i'm not because i guess because it's uh this five five oh nine by the way this oh oh here's the thing there's a price right there's a hike in price here as well so let me check the other one so um everything else is coming out at two dollars dollar night dollar 25 right dollar 25 at that time us in 92 lo and behold two years later and i guess it's because it's thicker maybe i'm not sure if all the batman, um, batman books were thicker at that point two dollars fifty so it doubled in price and i guess unless you're a kid uh you know basically going you're buying you know your batman comic each month with your pocket money i'm not sure if this came out by weekly or not could be wrong fortnightly whatever um but um you know you're you get are you there and um that's all the money you got uh you know that's your pocket money and that's double the you because you want you go when you go oh i got I got five bucks. I'm gonna buy five books. Now I can only buy three books because one of them's two dollars fifty, and it's the book that I would want. So yeah, so this is by Munch. I, I think it's a Doug Munch. I think it is. Let me just make sure that's right, because he's a gr another great Batman writer, right? Yeah, Doug Munch, and Mike Manley is on pencils, and Dick Diagiano, Diadano great guy. i mean these guys like he's um, 
Dick is, uh, Giordano is a great uh, anchor. And of course, um, you know, Mike over here is a great, um, you know, there's some really cool, uh, you can see, you know, really good pencils, artwork here. I, um, I can't remember. Uh, this is, has a DC Universe imprint, like logo there. I can't remember if, if it was at this point that, um, if, you know, that this is a big, big, huge story, Night's End, because I know Night 4 uh, was very, uh, for me, was, you know, uh, Fall of Gotham was what really got me into it, as I mentioned in the other video. Right, so that's that one. We've done the, um, we've done Superman, Man of Steel, we've done Robin, we've done Bat Condor, we've done Batman, but there's another Batman. So there's, that's Batman 509. Now we've got 60 oh, Batman uh, 69796, and this is by Dixon, Chuck Dixon, like I said. And this is probably why I bought it, uh, but also because it's Batman. Right, so now um, I, in my hands I have a 96, and I have a 96, Robin by D Chuck Dixon, and I have a Batman by Chuck Dixon. Right, as I mentioned, I um I actually messaged um uh, well commented on um Chuck's uh Facebook um sorry not YouTube thing that I was gonna cut up his uh his comments like his video answers to a to on a, on the subject of Conan and you know and edit and not edit but just just because he had a long you know hour stream but I just wanted to have this ten minute of that I said I'm gonna use it if that's okay course i use it anyway how do you like how does he just tell me if it's okay or not so i just clipped it because i want to let everybody know that this was important because i love conan as much as you know he's not in my he should be up in my top three because he should be up in my top three as uh what they're doing with punisher is really breaking my heart and uh and it's like oh there is a there's still like a what they call a um, a paper rub on the cover, right? I'm not sure you can see it. It looks like dust on it, but it's a paper rub. So when paper rubs on it, on the back of it, you know, it, the ink sort of like, it has this like a faded look on it. But apart from that, it looks perfect for such a bit. old book, right? Such an old book. Okay. So, oh yeah. So that was, I forgot to show you. So this is Detective 697, Chuck Dixon working both on, you know, on Bat, um, on Batman and on Robin. And this is the sort of people you want to be writing Batman. I mean, you want Chuck writing, Doug Munch and Chuck writing Batman right now. You want to be writing the whole, you know, you want to go, here, Chuck, got any stories for Batman? Yeah? Okay, come be right. Thanks, buddy. Let's go. How many you want to write? What, 12 issues? What? Can you, a year's lot? What? How much? Come on, man. We need you. All right, let's do some good stuff. Or, hey, how about a mini series? Come, you, an elder statesman of DC, you know, who have worked so much on these cool books that we own, that you build on, that everybody loves, right? Even now, people are buying the back, back issues, collecting them in trade paperbacks and flax, facsimiles. Yes, and absolutes and whatever collections, hard comes. Um, you know, come and work for DC, mate. Do a six issue, do a four issue, just just do something, because at the moment, <laughs> Batman's the only thing that's keeping DC going. All right, so next up, this is um. Uh, a book by Mark Wade, who I don't like so much as a you know as a character himself, <laughs> I should say. Uh, but um, you know, I, I like hard covers, and you know, I think this was a good deal on this, and so I, I was able to get it. And normally, this would be like about forty dollars you were on New Zealand, right? Brand new or thirty eight or whatever, because it's twenty four ninety nine. It's probably more expensive now because of freight costs going up due to the fuel crises that's been building up for a while not all of a sudden mind you so this is 
the flesh. Why Mark Way? Um, this is uh, DC 52 by the looks of it. And Akuna is on uh, art. Daniel Akuna is on art. And he's pretty cool. I can't remember where. I think it's from. Where is he from? Let's, have, let's make sure, right? This is Spanish. Right, so Daniel Akuna. Akuna? Akuna? Lives in a little village in Monsieur, Spain. For most of his career, he worked successfully for the European market. He first became known to American comic readers for his striking covers on such DC uh, titles as Outsiders, DC, JLA, Flash, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then he did, uh, and then after finishing his first project as full interior um, artist, pencils, uh, inks, and colors on an uh, in a, on an American comic, the eighth issue uh, miniseries *Uncle Sam and the, Fre uh, and the Freedom Fighters*, he moved on to moved he moved on to bring his talents to the Green Lantern, and also you have Freddie Freddie E. Williams the uh, third. I think is he the, doing the colors here? Um, I can't remember if he's doing the colors. I think I, I guess he's doing the colors, right? So no, they're both they're artists and. Um, yeah, so Fred is doing the artwork as well as, um, depending on which issues, there's Doug Braithwaite is doing the artist uh, artwork. Uh, there's Coy Turnbull. Uh, there's Bonus Superman's Cape. Uh, so there's a couple of stories in here. Um, yeah, so another, um, you know, another hardcover to be added to my collection. And some old comics. So, yeah, so this is another... Um, Another weekly delivery from last week, though I, I had um, because I had um, yeah you know, the Batman thing, and I just thought I'll leave it. See, so, yeah, because I only got the first single one first, and then you know this um, this one, and then I thought I'd just leave it until um, you know I'll wait see what else I get this week. So there's some more some more items coming, and uh, hope yeah, and there's more for me to pay off as well. You know as 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 it is. You know, when you're a comic book collector, you kind of like buying haphazardly. You're buying whatever you can get your hands on at the time because you're too afraid that if you don't do it, if you don't get it, like a gambler, you might not get it, right? You not, might never get it because the way comics are right now, you might, it'll get priced out of uh, back issues. will get priced out of the thing. As my fr friend Mark, Michael Mead says, it, it's, it'll be so bad soon. Because of the whole hoopla for the last decade, last especially last five years, where you know it's the prices are by speculators are making prices for comics go up, as well as first issues appearances because of all the DC Marvel uh, comic uh, movies and TV shows that are coming out. It's just like a basically popcorn. Okay, put your hand and grab one out. Put your hand and grab one out. Right. Okay, so that's that's me for today. Thank you again for joining me, and uh, hopefully you uh, you guys are enjoying these videos. Like, subscribe, and thanks for joining me on the narrative. And um, wherever you are, be safe, be well. Kakitano.